Hi, welcome to episode one of the cast, the podcast where we speak about all things in the Welsh music industry. During this podcast, we will be speaking to musicians, artists, and industry professionals uh, in the Welsh music industry. And we'll also get the chance to see some of those artists perform here at the Foundry. So for episode one, um, it's myself and Matthew Lodge, who will, with me, be speaking about and talking about what we've got coming up and um, also how we got to this point. Mm. So, Matt, why don't you start by telling us a bit about yourself? Um, well, it depends how far back you want to go, really. Let's go to the boom. The womb? Yes. Conception? Or... <laughs> <laughs> no, not conception. Um, music, I suppose. Let's go to the sort of the birth of music view, I guess. Yeah, so I think for me, music started pretty early on. Um, loved it all through school, especially high school. And then... I kind of quickly found that the opportunities weren't there. Hmm. So if I wanted to get a career or what do opportunities? Music, what do you mean? No opportunities. Well, there was places to perform. Hmm. Um, I was in quite a few bands in my teens, and there was a really good music scene around that time as well. In but Brecon, or mainly Landrindod and Belth, um, Clindlois as well. But because you're from Belth, aren't you? you yes. Yeah. 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 But beyond that, pursuing a career in the music industry, it was hard to get anywhere because there wasn't anything local. Mm. You could go to Cardiff or Bristol, but it was a big step. So I moved away to Brighton. I went to the industry of modern music, um, studied guitar there for a year, and then did sound technology for a year as well, um, performing all the time while I was doing it. And... Strangely, found myself doing video work after that. I was just going to say, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> um, but COVID hit, and I got furloughed from my job as a mechanic at the time, and found myself starting to make videos, music videos, and it just took off, and I've been doing that ever since. Ah, so the the video thing wasn't something you started. I didn't like... actively seek it out. Um, okay. Yeah, just started doing it. People enjoyed what I was doing. Hmm. Um, got a good network built up, and it just. Yeah, it's run ever since then. So, what sort of music, what sort of video work are you doing? It's mainly animation stuff. Um, I do shoot live music videos as well, but anything from promotion to lyric videos, animated music videos, a whole lot of things. Okay. Really. Well, I suppose you've got to be diverse of new with like the any sort of self-employed industry. You've got to be. Yeah. You know? Yeah. But it's great because I work with people from around the world, and all the music is different. Yeah. But it's mainly with artists that are up and coming. Um, so it's really nice to be able to help them, hmm. give them the tools they need to to succeed. Really, yeah. Um, that's about me up yeah. to the point. I think very good. Okay. But how about you? Hey. So where did music start for you? Um, hmm. I don't, my my parents are musical. My dad was always on the fiddle. <laughs> yeah. <Ba-dum-boom. laughs> no. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so like my my dad plays brass and uh, my mum did as well. Um, yeah, so I suppose I've always been around it. And then I suppose age six, seven, started mm-hmm. playing guitar and stuff. And had a few guitar lessons when I was young and then sort of forgot about it. You know, we was going to yeah. do teenage years and stuff. And then, I don't know, age 12, 13, probably I was, um, yeah, I was like just messing around with, with like friends who were in bands and stuff so you sort of learn in that sort of organic way and I suppose that's the beauty of when you're younger like you don't put any pressure on it and it you know just sort of organically becomes yeah you explore something. it by yourself don't you um, yeah and like I really didn't like school like I suppose um, I, Welsh and music were the only things I passed in school you know to the lessons that they give you to mm-hmm. um, that you've got to choose from so I was never really into school but um yeah, so then it was like because music was one of the things I sort of thought, oh, I'm pretty good at this. Like, yeah. my sort of goal, if you like, became sort of I wanted to just do something in music. And I remember um, a friend of mine um, was a huge influence uh, when I was younger. Uh, he 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 was like into like um, self help and all that sort of stuff, and he was like writing goals and all that sort of stuff. And being like a teenager, that was really weird thing to sort yeah, of think about yeah. but I remember specifically writing like one of my goals was to be 
um, a guitarist, and at the time an instrumental guitarist. I was playing a lot of like classical stuff and that. Okay. Um, to to play on stages like around the UK and things. And I sort of look at that now, and I think over the last ten years, I've been performing like a lot of like cover stuff and you know, rather than holiday parks, weddings, all that sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, so like it has, it has sort of, if you speak about achievement, I suppose I have achieved that, you know, I've, like I have always made since I was 19. I was an assistant manager at Peacocks when I was 19. Yeah. And then, um, yeah, it was like, it just wasn't, wasn't my thing. And uh, I became self-employed then when I was 19 and I've, well, 32 this year. So like I've, I've been doing it since I was 19 full time. So, yeah, so I suppose that's I've loved doing that. But um, now we're in Bracken, mm -hmm. and with the Foundry, which is the grassroots music venue, and it's going really well. You know, so we seem to have. So, how did you get to this point with the Foundry? What led to that? Um, well, I've I've probably skipped out a few years actually. Then, so <laughs> um, so when I was what was I went back to university when I was twenty four. Because when I was writing songs and things, I wanted to record my own music. Um, so I went, did a sound engineering degree. Okay. Started off creating sound and music, where it was a bit too, like, improvised for me. So mm -hmm. I went and did sound eng. Um, and then I ended up recording other people's music for three years, which uh, I had a studio in Newport for a long time. And then COVID hit, like you said. Yeah. Um, yeah, we were doing a lot of, like, audio books and stuff and um i loved it you know i had a, a really good friend so i'm still still friends with now jordan who i worked with and uh yeah it was the it was the editing and things when we started doing audio books because of covid we could only have one person in the studio at a time and whatever right. and so it started to get a bit monotonous oh, just like labor intensive yeah. <laughs> with the editing so um yeah so left the studio then came to bracken and uh yeah started this place so it's um yeah, like accidentally, but I suppose it, it sort of it all fits in with like just wanting to make a living from music, however yeah. that is. Yeah. I mean, this is probably like the most challenging thing I've ever done. Yeah, you know, so it's it's like I'm a big believer in do what you love and all that sort of stuff. Um, Have you found that your mentality around it has shifted so that it's not so much playing and performing and creating music, but giving people the opportunity to make music? Yeah, so like facil facilitating is like a big part. Like you know, we on a Thursday night we have a jam night mm -hmm. and stuff, and there's like I feel really, really lucky that like you know there's you, um, there's John, Shane, like, and then we've got a really good group of musicians who play like different things. So like yep. it does come together. And I sort of look at it sometimes, and it's almost like a um, like you go to a pub in Ireland type thing, and you got like loads of people like. And and sometimes when people walk in here, they're like amazed and they think it's some sort of like function band because, yeah. you know, we just all sort of play together. So yeah. I do still love performing. I'm not like, you know, and if I wasn't doing this, in all honesty, I'd probably have gone back to performing rather than recording. Okay. So, um, but yeah, so like I, I do still love the performing things, but actually seeing people come here, like I love on a Thursday when somebody comes for the first time and they sort of like, oh, they sit back, you know, and they mm -hmm. don't really sort of do anything and maybe I'll chat to the person and then six weeks later they're on stage playing with other people yep. you know and it's like that sort of like a development. completely different person yeah, yeah yeah and it's you know especially like I won't name names but um, the more shy people mm -hmm. who've come to the jam nights and you sort of like you just watch them week on week sort of yeah. do more and play more and stuff and it's like it's just really organic and I love, love that so I suppose you know to, to bring things back to um, this and what's, what's happening here is like the Foundry is a music venue and, you know, it's, it's here for our audience's entertainment. You know, it's, it's here for the local community. Um, like you said, opportunity. Mm -hmm. There isn't a great deal in Mid Wales in general, I think. No. I mean, so, with, with bands, when I was younger, we'd have to travel a long way to yeah. do any recording, anything promotion-wise. Yeah, yeah. We'd have to go miles for it. Now, I grew up in South Wales, so it was like, there's an abundance of like social clubs, mm -hmm. uh, like um, village halls and all sorts of stuff. And everywhere seems to have music on, whether it's sort of like cabaret or whether it's, you know, yeah. there's a lot, well, they call it the circuit, you know, the yeah. Welsh circuit, but it doesn't seem to be that in Mid Wales. You know, it's like, no. if there is, I don't know about it. You know, it's, I'm sure there are sort of areas, but even when I talk to people from Breck and from Bills and all sorts of stuff, it's sort of like 
obviously the gigs are in Swansea and Newport, Cardiff, all yeah. sort of stuff. So, yeah. so yeah, so that I suppose like part of this is the whole idea is to be that place to be able to catch touring bands and things on their way from I don't know Liverpool to Bristol. Or something yeah, which is great for yeah. networking as well. Because local bands can be introduced to these people, yeah, and more opportunities open up because of that. Really. Well, I mean, like one one thing that sticks out for me is like we had a band called Virgin Marys last year, um, who have got themselves like a really good following and stuff online, and like I've been a fan of theirs. Um, I've engineered live from a few times, and um, they had their own audience. And they mm. came to a sh- to do a show here, and then we had um, Stay Voiceless do their support for them. And the majority of the, uh, like I say majority, like everybody I spoke to loved um, Stay Voiceless. Yep. But they'd come to see the Virgin Marys. Mm-hmm. And it was the first sort of evidence I'd seen of like um, a support act adopting the headliners audience for the yeah. night and yeah. then gaining new fans from it. And it's like that organic growth is like, I find that really exciting. Yeah. And even though it's nothing to do with performance wise, I'm not performing, but to be able to sort of facilitate that mm-hmm. and be like, oh yeah. You know, this this is sort of like this place is serving people. Yeah. You know, yeah. it was good. Yeah. So, so um, in terms of what we're doing with the podcast, um, the cast is part of a bigger thing, which is also called Cast. Um, so there's uh, Cast stands for Creative Art and Sound Technology. Um, so there's a group of us who've come together, isn't it? There's like jam nights and um, people have just really sort of got involved in this place um, and we're looking to do workshops the recording studio is open um, the podcast as well and all things really to sort of help uh, promote and give us sort of a platform for performers and people in the industry I also find that like I get contacted a lot by like sound engineers and things or people who are not um, who live in mid Wales and it's like where do I go and be a sound engineer in mid Wales? Yep. You know, yep. that's that sort of thing. So, so yeah, so that's, um, I suppose that's the, the aim of this whole thing really is, um, mm-hmm. to, you know, to give, to put that like separate, um, thing in place. So that's for me, I suppose like that's, that's what cast is. Yeah. And I'm just really glad you're a part of it as well. Cause you know, you, I didn't know you until we, you know, to came to this yeah. place and, uh, yeah. So I think we're just, just really lucky to have, a good it's, it's a great people. little team we've got here. Yeah, yeah, it is good. So it'd be really exciting to see what comes out of it as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, so what are you, in terms of like your own work at the moment, what are you doing at the moment with that? Um, a whole mix of stuff at is the it? moment. Yeah. Um, yeah, rock stuff, folk, um, some medieval hip-hop, which was quite interesting a couple of weeks ago. Nice. So what, what um, are you, what's, what's your genre then? What do you like? What, what's your... What's your bag? Anything really. Hmm. I like she funk. Has, um, specific launch. Rock. Um, I would say, like when I see you play, it, like I, you, you do seem to like sort of play like a lot of sort of more funk bass and stuff. And I see like when we do the jams and stuff, it's good, especially with like John Pilgrim and stuff. Mm. When we, when we all get going, like funk is a, a good one. Yeah, I think it's just nice. Hmm. When you've got a crowd around, you just play a bit of funk. Yeah. Everyone gets up Everyone. and enjoys it. So. Yeah, yeah. And you can sing well with it as well. What, you? <laughs> Do you sing? No, no. I don't sing. <laughs> nope. I've never been singing. But, uh... So, um, with the podcast, mm-hmm. what's the main main goal with the podcast? Hmm. I think just showing off what's around, really. Yeah. It's like, I did... Um, did an alumni project because um, me like you I ended up doing video work even though I did a sound eng degree mm-hmm. um, I find that video work is very similar to sound work yeah. the workspaces are the same yeah, yeah, and it's a creative outlet yeah it was like the, the visual element is as important I think I mean like you speak about engagement and people's attention spans are shorter and mm-hmm. all that sort of stuff I mean we could do a whole episode on that and yeah. con- consuming content and streaming all that sort of stuff mm-hmm. um but yeah, so I think the the video thing that I ended up doing that, and I did a, um, an alumni project for Christ College, and um, it was like submissions of people who had been through the music department there, um, and where they are now and what they're doing. And one of those was um, the producer Greg Haver. Do you know? Mm. Um, and I learned a lot from doing that 
video, but I also th- noticed like a lot of those guys, they weren't in Bracken anymore. You know, no. they're not they're not in Bracken. No. They they're not even in Mid Wales mm. like most of them. So it's like they are doing things in music, but not in Mid Wales. Not here. You know? Yeah. So um, yeah, well, that kind of know. leads me on to my next point. So cast, what kind of thing will we offer people? Hmm. Coffee, lots of coffee. Plenty of coffee. <laughs> no, so um, I think it's cast itself, creative arts and sound technology. Uh, so it's like workshops are given, mm-hmm. you know, so we're going to be offering some, I, well, you and I last week discussed some songwriting projects, yeah. you know, um, so summer, all that sort of stuff, summer holiday activities, all that sort of stuff. Um, but I think I'm not even speaking about ambitious kids who want to go and do a thing in music you know no. I mean there's there's a lot of people who you know some people come and retire to Bracken you know so it's like we want to be able to offer that experience it's not you know age specific um, but I think like workshops is and tutorials in um, sound video um, I mean lighting to an extent I guess you know yeah. and, and all the things that come along with those it's, it's the things that there's no access to it here, mm. really, not until now. Mm. Um, and it's like this mysterious art. Yeah. That is. But you know, I think it's deeper than that because I could go on YouTube now and find hundreds and hundreds of videos on this stuff. I don't think it's just the skills people are looking for. I think it's it's just like the jam night here. It's like there's a community, mm. and people know in Brecon. There's people starting starting to realise that on a Thursday night. There is somewhere to go in Bracken, and there will be live music. Yeah. And as performers, then the people who like to perform, some people didn't even know they like to perform. Um, they know that they can go on a Thursday and perform, yeah. or grab something on Guitar Pro tabs or whatever, and go. So, sort of, oh, should we give this a go? You know, yeah. and it, it yeah. works really well. But there's um, no pressure or anything as well. No, it's, I think that's the key thing I'm moving forward with cast as well. Is that there is no pressure. No, it's not like we've got to hit this. You've got to produce this to yeah. to pass or something like that. It's yeah, just well, it's just fun, isn't it? It's like if you get a group of people together, it's like, oh, should we write a song? Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, there hasn't got to be sort of any sort of huge why or nobody no. has to be to a certain standard to be able to take part. It's just, you know, people young and old can, um, can explore, I guess. Mm-hmm. And I think sometimes that's where that, like, for me anyways, it's like you, that exploration of things, that's what leads on that's what makes you want to go and do something. Yeah. But having a place to do it, which is sort of like, you know, like say no, no pressure. Um, it sort of allows you to do it more freely, I guess, yeah. without, you know, it's, it's not graded. It's not like, you know, people are not so telling you how good you are. And So with the podcast, um, what's the promotion side of it going to be? Well, so like, obviously <laughs> if we had to be a sound engineer or like somebody who's been, producing in the industry or whatever it'd be mm-hmm. difficult to sort of like you know show their bit off at the end you know yeah, sort of like yeah. show, show us you pressing that fader but with a a local upcoming artist yeah yeah so, so, so local uh, upcoming artists and things we'll be um, yeah they'll be doing at the end of, the, of every episode then they'll be um, just a short snippet of them uh, performing um, whether it's a band or solo or whatever um, just because I tell you like as a venue I can't tell you how frustrating it is to have a conversation with somebody who you know is really good mm-hmm. and then you have their promo video to try and promote the gig or whatever and it's like ah oh, okay that was a brilliant uh, iPhone recording mm. and uh, really glad to see Auntie Gladys had her finger over the microphone the whole yep, time yep. you know so it's, you know, it's, it's <laughs> like those, those sorts of, so I think it's, it's just a nice um, way for them to have access sort of like a higher quality yeah. promotional material you know they're really good yeah but the media doesn't reflect it well and People who haven't seen them before, you know, they're not going to come to the door. If mm. they don't, if they're not impressed with what they see sort of like on the video or whatever, it's, um, they, they're not going to bother in the first place, especially when like, you know, ticket prices, five, ten pound, you know, times are hard for people. And like, if they're going to spend their money, they're going to want to spend it on something they know is good. So, yep. Yep. so yeah, so that's part of the reason with the, um, the promo at the end and little performance and stuff. And obviously just for people's entertainment. Mm-hmm. So yeah, the, um, the podcasts, they'll be giving opportunities to local artists, musicians, artists from further afield as well. 
and professionals within the industry, just giving them a platform where we can find out what they're up to at the moment, their journey of how they got here, what's in store for the future, and um, we'll see a little snippet at the end. Yeah, yeah. So exciting. there'll be, um, yeah, we'll have more episodes out really soon. Yeah. So stay tuned. See you on the next one. Yeah.